Podcast. Welcome to the Christian Network Entrepreneurs. Pastor T, take it away. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining Christian Networking Entrepreneurs. Here at Christian Networking Entrepreneurs, we interview emerging entrepreneurs, small business owners, and community leaders. And we want to focus on biblical principles to help grow our business. We're looking for strategies, we're looking for resources, and we're looking for divine connections to grow our business in God. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate it. Again, I'm your host, Pastor T, and today we have a phenomenal guest. Today our guest is none other than Pastor Ken Johnson. Ken, thank you so much for tuning in and joining us today. It's an honor to be here with you, Pastor T. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So we're going to have some Holy Ghost fun up in here today, okay? So what we normally do, we start off by talking to our guests, and we start off by just finding out a little bit about yourself. Tell us about you, who you are, where you've been, where you come from. From. And don't forget your entrepreneur journey, the good, the bad, and the blessed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I, I've, uh, I'm a Cleveland native, of course. I was born uh, in the St. Clair area. Uh, East Cleveland is really where I, I was uh, raised long term. But uh, my journey has been very uh, amazing. You know, I, I grew up. Uh, in a very uh, toxic environment somewhat had you know loving people they love you the best that they can and give you all they can but didn't have a lot of entrepreneurs uh, in the family I probably was one of the first uh, to, to branch out uh, and begin to do entrepreneurship but some of the things that uh, you know I've done uh, since a young man is I have really I, I bought my first apartment building when I was 17 really? it was right up the street on uh, 79th it wasn't a great uh, situation but I bought a, a four sweeter in a three family I was 17 about to be 18 but I was doing a whole lot of bad stuff uh, to be in position but I bought uh, my first uh, four family and it was a three bedroom and then I bought a three uh, family and that three family was amazing because I have never seen so many roaches in my life you, you, you would literally walk up in this house and we had the clamp we had Jed Clampett the black version living in there and uh, the Clampers would be in there having coffee with the uh, the insects and it was the most amazing thing and I remember I went to exterminate my first property and these people literally they had lived uh, the most atrocious life I'd ever seen they called the state inspectors on me and uh, it, it wound up being to their detriment and mine too because they wound up tearing the house and I was doing everything in my power to get this house up but I started as an entrepreneur as a young age investing uh, in real estate I opened up my first bar and nightclub when I was less than 21 even old enough to have the liquor license uh, but I opened up a place that was called Club Rich and it's a very popular place off 140 of today it's called Calypso I created uh, the Calypso Calypso's brand, uh, as well as uh, Mr. Wonderful's uh, Chicken and Waffles, wow. and uh, and so you know we've been around uh, a few blocks. So I can talk about uh, you know some of the journey along the way. One of the things that I, I when I talk about um, how I was raised, I didn't, I've never met my natural father. I did have some fathers that were in my life, uh, a stepfather, but he battled addiction issues. And then I had a man uh, that I met right before I was 16, and he was one of the biggest drug dealers uh, the city of Cleveland has ever seen. He was a multimillionaire. Uh, and he was shot on right before I was about to turn 16. He was killed uh, September 15, 1987. And uh, but he was an entrepreneur, and uh, and so I really liked uh, his swag. But I had to learn on my own. No one taught me. And I think that's one of the things that that people struggle with is that we we hadn't had the foundation. When we look at other races, they've had foundations of millionaires, foundations of entrepreneurs, foundations uh, of successful people uh, that they can look to and glean from and work for and, and get advice from. And I I, I never had. Uh, never had that I had to learn uh, everything so I made a lot of mistakes along the way and so if one thing I can tell an entrepreneur is man study to show yourself approved uh, do your research do your homework uh, find organizations find or organizations like this that Pastor T heads up and sit and ask questions ask for connections ask for people you know that can be a part of because you uh, need some understanding you need some wisdom you need a connection you need a fellowship in, in order to really push you in, in to that next level you may have a great idea and, and that's what I see a lot of people we have great ideals, but we, we can go from conception, but we don't know how to go 
go to full manifestation, how to take it to that next level. And uh, so I've experienced, you know, a whole lot of bumps in the road. I can help teach some people today on how not to make some mistakes. You know, I, I literally know. Oh my God, you know. But 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 I but what I what I'm understanding today is is that you are only as strong as your team. Your network is yeah. important. It's very important. So you said some wonderful things. You just so many bullets came out so quickly. So we're gonna come back and unpack some of those bullets. Yes, ma'am. So it sounds like you said when you first started, you started in the streets and you learned from the street of hard knocks. Oh, Speak no about that first. Well, I, I learned uh, in the streets. You know, I started selling uh, drugs when I was 13 years old. My mother gave me my first quarter pound of reef for her and her, uh, my stepfather. And so I've been hustling uh, at some level since I was a kid. And so, uh, you know, that gave me a whole lot of street savvy on how to how to be able to go out there and make it happen. I remember one time, uh, this was right after the man that uh, was on my birth certificate, uh, he, had, he was killed. Uh, he had literally a room full of uh, Fila uh, swimsuits and T-shirts. And so literally, I'm not even 16 years old, but I got maybe $20,000 worth of goods inside of this room. And I'm going dough to dough. I'm going bar to bar. And I'm selling these, you know, these T-shirts. But So what I've learned is a closed mouth don't get fed, you know. And I'm out there, you know, learning, you know, how you remember in, in the Bible where it talks about uh, that the one guy, he, you know, he realized that he got in trouble with his master and he began to go to all those people that he had given goods to. And he said, man, you give you get fifty dollars, you know, you pay five you give. And so I started saying, well, listen, man, you know, I can do these these three. It was two hundred dollar swimsuits back then. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I got three for fifties, you know, and we work in deals. But I, I, I learned that it's better to have a bird in hand than one flying away. And so, you know, and so I began to hustle, you know, at a young age and uh, before. Before I was 20 years old, I opened up my first bar restaurant, uh, and it was off 140th, and, and I'll never forget, you know, is that, uh, and I tell pastors this today, I use this story, is that when I was young and getting ready to open up my bar uh, and restaurant, and it, was, it was first the bar, and then I, I, I built the restaurant to go along with it, but I was out there uh, at every place where there were people passing out flyers, I, and I'm on one leg. Now, you know, my story is, you know, I'm on one leg. I lost my leg coming from Cedar Point Prime weekend uh, back in 1989, but I'm on I'm on one leg, and I'm out here grinding, you know, because I'm not going I'm, I'm not gonna let the next person outwork me, you know, and so I'm out there, you know, making it happen, and I remember I went everywhere. I'm at the Mirage. I'm at all the clubs. I'm, I'm everywhere where there's people, and at our grand opening, I'm riding down I-90, and I'm singing Chris Bender, you know, my, my, my roof open, get ready for the grand opener, you, which one will I choose, bought the ball out of control, and, uh, and I remember getting there, when I pulled up, there was a line of people outside the door on both sides of the street, lined up to get inside of this, this little club, and what I've learned is, is that a closed mouth don't get fed, and lazy people get slaughtered. You know, if, if you don't have the tenacity, if you, if you listen, because you can, if either you're going to be a shy genius or you're going to be a vociferous, you know, wonder worker, you know, but you got to say something because if, if you're a behind the scene person, you use your, your knowledge and you use your skills in order to work in, in that base. But if you're going to be in business and you want people to come, listen, you can open up a church and put up a sign. You know, you might not get that many recipients because, you know, they don't know your brand. You know, and right now, you know, I see it right now is, you know, we open up a brand new brand, but people have to know your name. They do. And and we went out there and we made them know our name when we was club rich and we was body rocking and you know we had different days and we did different things but I learned young you know how to be aggressive and how to go out there and, 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 and you know the Bible says you have to take it by force sometimes mm -hmm. ain't nobody gonna give you nothing mm -hmm. you know and, and we waiting on you know somebody to give us something and I'm telling you you're, nobody is gonna give us you know anything not at the magnitude where we want to be long term continually uh, consistently diligently you know God wants to bless us but he uses us to bless us. You got to get up and you got to make it happen. You ought to shout that right now. Make, make it, it happen. happen. Yeah. He gives us the power to get wealth. That's what the scripture says. So in knowing that God gives us the power to get wealth and what you're talking about is marketing and promotions, right? Mm -hmm. So you as the entrepreneur need to market the brand, which is you. Right. You are the brand. So in entrepreneurship, we have to understand that we are our brand. And the number one thing that we're selling is ourselves. Right. So in selling yourself back in the day as a young man, 17 years old, you were selling yourself when you went out door to door and was selling the goods that you had. No then you was going out and you bought your apartment building. Then you opened up Club Rich and did all those things because you had an entrepreneur spirit. Right. And like one of the things that you said that I wanted to bring out is entrepreneurs can't be lazy. And it sounds like you were saying, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you have to operate out of a sense of urgency. Yes, yes. Well, I, I know uh, when I look at people today, 
there's no urgency. Ooh, everything and, and, urgent. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, I'm in the restaurant business and I tell these young people that work for me, like you, you know, like I'm getting ready to, to have a meeting with someone, let them know you, you need to work with urgency. Urgency. You know, because the customer don't want to hear you had a bad day, you overslept, you didn't know. They, they don't care about you smoked a pound of reefer last night. They want their food within a reasonable amount of time. You have to be urgent. You know, and, and what I realize is this is I just went from 17 to 47 so fast. Ooh, I'm trying to wee. figure out what did these 30 years go right and I'm sitting up there saying no I, I got I got about I got about eight strong years of urgency at 55 I plan on being on absolute hello, you know cruise hello. control and, and so we have to be uh, urgent you know and, and people are letting their their lives pass them by and are not experiencing the good life he has come that we might have life uh, and that more abundantly to the excess till it overflows to the full and we're not having a full life we are existing and many of us we have we have gone ahead and we have put lipstick on that elephant we, we have made that pig you know we put some we uh, uh, some weave on that pig and we tried to fix up you know the situation but God has said no I've came to give you life you he never came so we could just be here and you know I, I'm, I'm gonna listen listen 50 cent he wrote the movie a long time ago I'm gonna get rich or die trying and I'm gonna walk in faith amen and when my life is over I'm gonna be like Paul and I'm gonna say that my life was poured out like a drink yes. offering that I did everything that was on the inside of me don't care what the haters say don't care what the prognosticators amen all of those that that won't support don't care nothing about that man if you're gonna be Build your brand, build your life, so that you can live the high quality. Because He came to give us life to, in, in abundance to the full, till it overflows. Amen. I want my cup to overflow. I want it to run over on other people, so that they get blessed, so that they can be a blessing, so we can learn how reciprocity works, but also how to pay it for it. So you, we we got to get busy, so we can make it happen. But lazy people get slaughtered in the mm -hmm. kingdom and in the business world. Either way, either way. My mother used to say, either you're going to roll with me or I'm rolling over you. <laughs> either way, I'm rolling on. And we as Christian entrepreneurs, we have to have tenacity and we need to work out of a sense of urgency, knowing that if God has placed a vision inside of you, the first instructions was write the vision, make it plain. So those that read it can run with it. Though it may tarry, that means though it may not happen today, right. though it may not happen tomorrow, if you stick to it, you will see the fruits of your labor because when we talk about seed time and harvest yes. this that time that we have to work on but what are we doing during that time right. so what have you been doing during your time you've planted the seeds you've done the work you've planted multiple businesses mm -hmm. and now we're working on a new business yes. right now so let's talk about the new business that we're working well, on you know you know uh I, if I was to be uh, honest, you know, Paul said, you know, he said, I boast and I sound like a fool, right? But I can boast and, and, and not really sound as foolish because I helped to create uh, a new way of cooking in the inner city throughout the whole Cuyahoga County uh, that everybody mimics and copies in, 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 in all the least businesses, whether it's Arab or black. You know, everybody copies the Club Rich Calypso Mr. Wonderful style. I created uh, Club Rich Calypso's uh, and Mr. Wonderful's chicken and waffles, and everybody copies uh, that style. Every, everybody uh, has tried to imitate, you know, the way we season uh, sweet Jesus, which is our honey lemon glaze. You know, you have a lot of imitation and they say imitation is the greatest form of flattery. I don't want no flattery. I want to go to every business and say, you owe me a royalty. <laughs> you, you owe me some reciprocity because yes. you, you have taken what I created, uh -huh. you know, and, 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 and now, you know, you've tried to duplicate it in your own bit and many people are having even more success than I've had with it, taking the stuff that I created, you know, so, but I'm, I'm able to take a concept in, in my thoughts and able to, to bring full manifestation so what I did is we went from uh, uh, Chipper, I mean, we went from uh, Calypso's Club Rich, uh, you know, and Mr. Wonderful's Chicken and Waffles. Now we have a new brand, and it's called Chipper's Seafood Steaks and, and Melts. And what I did was I, I changed, you know, just uh, the thinking a little bit. You know, we had, we had tried to go into the franchising thing, and we had uh, bought a burrito place. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you got to recognize you're not as strong as Chipotle. It's not as strong as Moe's. And if you want to if you want to excel at, at a high level, especially when people are taking out 6 7% every Wednesday. They, they don't say well we you know you had a bad week. No they go in your cash register when you buy a franchise and they take that money out weekly and every fee that's attached to it they get it quarterly whatever it is and so you know and so I got up and I started thinking I said you know I'm a I'm, I'm a brand creator. I had literally um, I had someone come to me uh, maybe over, over the last it was six years ago and uh, they wanted to buy everything that we had and they wanted to give me a 50 store deal and uh, that wound up going it, it went left you know and I realized then like you know what 
important. You have the ability to create brands that national uh, uh, banks, national investors that they want to be a part of. And I said, let me go ahead and just rebrand, you know, because I'm getting older. It's time to start thinking smarter instead of harder. And so I rebranded. We created Chippers. And, and Chippers is our newest creation up at 1245 Psalm Center in Mayfield Heights. You know, and you pay like you wait. We are in a very exclusive suburb. It's, it's super, you know, busy in the region. But what, what, we're, what I'm seeing right now is I'm going back to market it is they don't know the brand yet they don't know the name yes. yet and so what's going on is are people that some people are coming in uh curious you know and they're trying it and they're loving so word of mouth is starting to take root and people are saying man you know what i really enjoyed this and they're starting to tell people doesn't matter the nationality when you try these groceries they like man they speak for themselves yes. and so but, but what i realize is this okay you know we're getting that but if we're gonna maximize it is that i gotta get busy i have to get busy because now we're walking in a new space everything is now going through social media uh, and then not on top of social media you have to still have some gorilla in you gorilla marketing you have yes. to be a door-to-door -door, uh, salesman so I'm getting you know 10,000 flyers printed right now and I'm setting a goal for myself that I'm gonna get up earlier than what I've been getting up and I'm gonna hit everything in Mayfield Mayfield Village I'm gonna hit everything in Chester and I'm going to Richmond I'm going to uh, University Heights I'm going to South Euclid I'm going to Cleveland Heights I'm going or anything that's within a 30 minute uh, area because they need to know that chippers got the best ball bag in town, got the best seafood in town, that our melts, hey man, that they melt in your mouth, that we are incredible, that we do exceedingly abundantly yes. be above anything you can ask, and if you're not full, we can come back and give you a refill, because we want you to leave, and we want you to be satisfied, and so now I got to get on my grind, because at 47, I have a sense of urgency, urgency. I done yes. lost enough, listen, I, I done lost yes. enough to recognize, no, it ain't over, hey man, God is still blessing, when I look all around me, I realize that there's a blessing all around me, if he feeding the birds, if, if, the, if the trees are still Still going, if the grass is still going, that means that he is still in operation yes. and he still got a blessing with my name. And you ought to type that right yes. now. There's a blessing, blessing with my name. If I'm gonna push, hey amen. Now is my I'm in the now season of my life. Now faith is working, and I have to demonstrate. I, I gotta do the moonwalk like Michael Jackson. I can't sit up and tell everybody I know how to dance. If you're gonna make it happen, make it happen right now. Right now, right now. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You are on fire, and I feel the fire. I feel I the there. Holy Spirit, it and I feel Shabbat everything. Feet that is happening in this place today. Let's back it up. Let's back it up. Let's back, back it up. It up so my viewing audience, I'm just saying what I want to know and I know if I want to know what they want to know. So tell us about that franchising process first. So you did a franchise and you said it didn't work. So tell people like, so if I was interested in front, what does it look like? What would that take? Well, you know, the franchising uh, piece of it, uh, See, you know, I'm a bottom feeder. That means I'm always looking for an opportunity. So I bought an existing franchise that had been around past five years. Okay. And uh, they had... Uh uh, they they had poor management and sometimes you can be a great person I'm a great person but sometimes we hire out of emotions or out of need okay. and we don't have the right qualified people and so I bought a franchise that had already been existing as a bottom feeder got a great deal on it uh, the people who, who sold it to me they spent 350000 uh to build the place out I came in and bought it at a fraction of what they had spent originally you know but that franchise piece is you know they have many opportunities out there right what I'm working on right now is saying you know what let me help people go into a space with Mr. Wonderfuls, Calypsos, Chippers. You know, these are my brands because mm -hmm. I'm working on my franchise because I'm right. saying we can do this at a fraction right. of a cost right. because Same I know thing. how to take a little bit, mm -hmm. right, and turn it into much. I opened up five restaurants in 24 months starting with less than $20,000. You know, that? opened up five stores. You know, when we did, when we did club, uh, uh, Mr. Wonderfuls, it blew so fast, right? You know, but what I came to realize was this, is that what, it wasn't the wise thing because you got to have good locations and you got to have a strong team and so that franchise piece you know like like what what uh, hotheads want you know which is a burrito place we had dealt with do you know you coming in you're going to spend three hundred and fifty thousand dollars now that their new bar is really 450 that they want you to spend I'm sitting up there saying if we spend 350 I can open up mm, maybe three locations yeah. for 350 I yeah. can do four locations yeah. and I can still get the same amount of uh, uh, of unit Revenue. value yeah. I can you know mm -hmm. and so it's just about you know using some but if you if you want a proven uh, a brand you find a brand out there in the franchise space that you know that people know that brand they know that 
name and that they have proven results that they win. Like any day of the week, you can give me a Chick-fil-A. You can give me a Popeyes. I will take one of them. But, but Chick-fil-A has, has a special program that you can get on. But it's, it's very, it's one in a million chance. But if you get it, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity. You know, but other brands have good good opportunity. But I got a, a brand that we're going to have a good opportunity. You know, but, 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 but what you have to realize is with franchising come with a lot of upfront money, great credit, and they're going to get six to seven percent every week out of your cash register and you have no say so they go right in and they take the money so just be prepared for that but if you winning at a high level you don't mind don't six mind. or seven percent because you're winning so that's what we want to do is we want to concentrate on winning because many times people trip over pennies on their way to dollars and they lose out on the blessing you know of being great because they penny pinching too hard now I don't want the cheapest space no more that's I don't right. want eight hundred dollar a month rent no more I'm just gonna be honest you know I pay four five thousand ten thousand or whatever it's gonna take if I'm gonna get a winning opportunity and many people they keep looking at uh, uh, at space and, and how much they can afford but sometimes you got to just know how to negotiate now I can't give you all the game I'm gonna be you. like I JC he like I, he said I'm gonna give you a million dollar game for $9.99 you got to pay for something you know we do do consulting right but but at the end of the day you got to know how to negotiate the lease yes. negotiate the contract yes. negotiate the build out you can get some of this stuff all inclusive and they're gonna back it out later but you can get your start with a little bit of nothing but a good conversation a vision and some credit you know, so we can help put you in a position to win if, if you really want to take your business to that next level. Amen, amen. So the ultimate goal with Chippers is to be franchising. Oh, ain't no question. All right, that's awesome. Oh, that's ain't no question. Uh, no, because awesome. I, I have one leg, but it's better that I work through a thousand disciples. Amen. Yeah, Amen. I can't do everything. You, you know, I, I'd rather get, I'm like the other people, let me get that little 6%. Mm -hmm. Let me show you, yeah, how, to, show you how, how to maximize, it. you know, how to maximize your situation. You know, and, and, and I'm telling you, you know, because I still own the rights to Calypso's, to Mr. Wonderful's, or Chipper's. So I'm going to franchise all of them and put people from Arizona, you know, to St. Clair in a situation where they can win. You know, and, But I'm, we're going to do it at a level where people can afford to come in. You know, I teach a seminar. It's called How to Take Your Income Tax Check and Never See Another Broke Day. You know, because a lot of times people, they, they have the monies, but they're so worried about, you know, the image. I ain't worried about image. I got on buddies right now. I don't have to have on Air Jordans. I don't have to have on Timberlands. Everything I wear, I sell, you know, because I, I'm not worried about what you think about me. I'm worried about are my kids eating? Are they getting? Are they going to have something for college? When, when, when I die, am I going to even inherit to my children? I'm not worried about, you know, what you're what you thinking about. No, and many times people get that check. Man, I see women, men, they have five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 and you broke in a week. I be saying, I don't waste that kind of money in a year to waste it now I gambled away in the stock market you know but I ain't gonna just go and say man I bought me some George check these out because those are depreciating uh they're, they're liabilities they're not assets they depreciate the moment that you you buy them they they, they lose value and so we we want to teach people how to have value of building lives taking a little and multiplying it you know I, I, I taught one time I said man you know I, I was selling socks and it wasn't no shame in my game but I'm buying socks at, at 40 cent a clip and I'm selling for five dollars a pair and you sit up there laughing at me because I'm the sock man I, I just whatever it's going to take but I know how to multiply because you can take $50 and buy you 125 pair of socks and go out there and take that and if you only got $2 a pair that's a $300 you know investment that you that you receive back and then you take that 300 but the thing is compounding it multiplying it growing it learning how to make it happen but a closed mouth don't get fed and lazy folk get slaughtered somebody say make it happen make it happen <laughs> well you make don't have me happen. preaching this morning like a Sunday morning holiday. I'm Hallelujah. loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So Pastor Ken talking about the cost of goods sold. He's talking about getting an ROI, a return on your investment. He's talking about taking your ideal and sharing it with others so you can have compound interest. He's talking about residual income when you came up with the ideal and you passed it along to others, but you were smart enough to have a stake in it. So you have a stake in Mr. Wonderfuls. You have a stake in Calypso's. You have a stake in all the businesses that you created. Is that what I hear you saying? I have the, the ownership at the top. Okay. I'm the creator. You know, every, any, anyone that you see operating, they didn't create anything. They didn't create a recipe. They didn't create a logo. They didn't create a taste. I created, you know, everything. And I don't say that, you know, braggadociously is that, no, I created, you know, Sweet Jesus. I created, you know, the uh, the deal tartars. I created the the spices, you know, that we use, the, uh, the batters that we use. I created that. So, you know, I created the brand. I'm at the top of the food chain, so I can pass that on any. They can't stop me, but I can stop them anytime okay, I want to. Okay, okay. All right. That's good to know. Yeah. 
Because it's like as a creator, as a creative entity, we always pray and asking God to give us witty inventions and ideas so, so he can, we can act on the power that he has given us to get well. One thing that you talked about, I want to back up with that, is people. You talked about people. You talked about hiring people. So when it comes to hiring people, for me in my industry, my industry is the beauty industry, mm -hmm. and I used to always hire based on personality. I never hired based on skills because I can always teach you the skills that you needed, but I couldn't teach you to be a nice person. I couldn't teach you to have customer service. I couldn't teach you to like people and treat them like your family when they came in. So when you're hiring, that can make or break a business. Go more detail on that well you know I have hired uh, uh, from the heart you know on many occasions because people they come and they say that they need a job and they know that I'm in ministry and uh, but uh, I'm, I'm learning is that you have to hire people that have have a proven record of uh, of being consistent you know not people that uh, they, they just quit their last job two weeks ago you know and they're now looking for another opportunity you know if I have people that that want to work that's yes, hungry yes. you know and I'm and I and I realize you know people that have mouths to feed uh, families to take care of that they're a little bit more apt to to be more consistent than some people are you know who don't have anything to lose that they can go back and live in their mother's basement at 47 years old you know and and, and they just have something to fall back on. But when you have people to take care of, you know, you, you try and find quality people that are very sincere. And you, you need, we should all know how to read people, you know, and read the resume. And many times we don't do the, the background check. They give us people to call and ask, well, how were they, you know, in, 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 in their tenure with us? And a lot of times, man, we just overlook that stuff and just be so hungry to, uh, you know, to, to hire somebody. Right now I'm hiring, you know, several people that we need right now. I am cooking. I've never been a cook at any of my restaurants. I teach people how to cook. You you know, but right now, until I find the right people, I'm working shifts myself. You know, because I want my food to be uh, excellent, so I have to, I have to sacrifice because I make money uh, sitting in front of a computer on a telephone in negotiations. I really don't do it. You know, chicken wing to chicken wing or fish to fish. You know, but but at the end of the day, you do what you have to do. Ooh, you, yes. you have something in this empty yes. because this is the mistake that I've made over and over again is that I will take and create a business and then put it in a novice's hand, and in six months they have destroyed what you've given. You trying to figure out what happened because when I gave it to you it was ascending it was blowing up it was going higher you know but like you said you got somebody in there we had somebody they had an attitude I came back to check on the business and I'm like well what happened you know I'm busy doing it and I'm like well what happened the sales were just here you know and then I start talking to people and they like well such and such was nasty he had a horrific attitude and I ain't never coming back he sent out some garbage and I have I have a no junk policy listen if it ain't good enough for you to pay for it, when you look at it don't send it out be honest with the customer I burnt your shrimp I don't want to give you that. People will respect that. For you, to, you know, there was a woman the other day. I had I had a, a cooking training, and I looked up at them shrimp and them shrimp man. They was you know they looked like them boys was they was dark chocolate. I was like, <laughs> and so I, I told the woman. I said, ma'am, you know, I said if you just give me a minute, I said I want to go back and make sure that these shrimp are right. Yeah, you know, and, and yeah. I gave her some extra shrimp, some yeah. extra fish for her time. You know, but at the end of the day, he was gonna send out some garbage, and I had to let him know we have a no junk policy. You know, if it's not right, it's gonna come out your check. My check, yeah, if you sent out the junk, it's going to come out your check. Yes. That's where they want to fight and cuss you out. But you need to understand that there's a standard, and we ought to keep the standard high. You know, because people will brutally, hey, man, hurt you online if you make a mistake. And I'm talking about, they, they, the people don't want to care about, you know, you blew it, that you just got started. No. Hey, man, your name is on the line. And so you have to make sure that you find quality people that, that are concerned with care, that know how to follow directions, and, and that can be corrected because correction is for direction. So when you find people and you realize, you know that you can't tell them nothing that they know everything that might not be the right employee for you because they're coming up under your auspice and leadership in order for them for your place to go to the next level they have to follow your recipe I had a guy one time I said listen this is how we make the barbecue sauce everything is written you written down for you and so when I walked into the place uh, I, the barbecue sauce had five pounds of butter floating at the top <laughs> and, I, and so I blew my wig I just blew it for a second and I go you know yappity yap you know don't come back you know but at the end of the day, you know, I'd sit up there saying, why would you put butter in my barbecue sauce? <laughs> the recipe does not call for that. And, and that's, that's why many times people are destroyed and they will take you along their journey and go off and get another job after they've left you in total, utter destruction, you know, because they don't know how to follow the simplistic route of following directions. It's and that's, 
follow the recipe. That's important. That's very important. So in talking about the people that you hire and the importance that you have people that are dependable, reliable, and available, not hiring out of your emotions, using your discernment when people are coming to get a job. And like you talked about, doing your due diligence. Check their resume. Call their references and see what they have to say about them. Me being in management in my current position, when I call some um, of the references, sometimes they don't even give them a good review. And I'm thinking, wow, they put this person's name down. Did they know that they were not going to give them a good review? But I thank God that that person was honest to say what it is that they felt about that person, not being on time or not being dependable or not being available. You talked about some other things, and I want to pull them out. You talked about the sacrifice. You talked about the integrity. And you also talked about correction when it comes to dealing people. So let's start with the sacrifice first. When you're in business as an entrepreneur, there is a sacrificial things that will take place. So I, I look at it as like priority. What's a priority, right? So as we're working out of a sense of urgency and knowing that as entrepreneurs, we have to sacrifice. So speak to that. Well, you know, sacrifice is it, the, the name of the game. I mean, when you, <laughs> especially savage. when you're dealing with a, a, a hands-on business, you know, I mean, as a beautician or, or, or nail tech, you can't sacrifice, uh, you know, quality and somebody else can do your job. You can't leave your child there and say, well, I need you to, you know, do something. No, they come in, you know, to you. So you have to sacrifice, you know, your time. When you're in the restaurant business, right, you have to sacrifice, you know, your time if you want to win. And what I'm seeing is that if we, we will win at the highest levels uh, once we have proper training and the proper people in place. But until then, and you know that that has been uh, put in place, you have to sacrifice to be there. You know, me, me and my wife and my kids, we there right now. I have a 14-year-old. She can cook my 16-year-old. Uh, when Cass, uh, owner Larry James, he comes by, he says, I want Kristen to cook my salmon. <laughs> you know, but my baby at 16, you know, she can make some incredible salmon. I can, I can leave them in position, you know, uh, put them in place because uh, they, they know how to work it. But I can't just trust anybody else, right. you know, with our goods. No, we have to be there over. So you have to be there hands-on. You have to taste this stuff, you know, to make sure that it's going out fresh and correct on a daily basis. A lot of times, man, we just trust people to do right. People do not respect what you expect they only respect what you inspect All and so right. that means that you have to stay on top of your game yes. you got you have to inspect you know every area of your business you know I'm sitting up there saying I'm going to bed late waking up early you know this morning I was sitting there you know we coming out uh, with an adjusted menu because I see over the first two months what's hot and what's not and what's too labor intensive and so I'm, I'm, I'm clearing I'm, I'm bringing clarity to myself and my yes. menu and so I'm sitting there this morning I'm dealing with the other uh, designers and saying take this away add this you know I see these little typos and this has been going on for three weeks, the redo. You know, but but I'm sacrificing saying, no, you know, we're going to get this right, you know, and, and because my next move has to be my best move. So I'm sacrificing my time right now. And, and like I told you, all at, as we close out September and October, because the winter months are coming, is that I'm about to pass out 10,000 flyers. I'm going to every business in surrounding communities, and I'm going I'm going there with a team to, to pass out some coupons. Because, listen, there is no money shortages in the earth. What it's there nice. is is it is the sacrificial of our time, a sacrifice of what it's going to take because they're not just going to come because you put up a sign. You can buy the most beautiful sign, but if they do not know your brand, your taste, your flavor, your swag, you will sit there and die having the best product on the block, but nobody coming in to enjoy it. So I'm taking it to the street. So I'm sacrificing my, my mornings. I'm getting up and my goal is, is that I get out at least two hours every day before we open at 11 o'clock and meet business owners in the community and surrounding communities so we can set ourselves up to win long term and then as I prepare for our catering season during Christmas time you know I'm making phone calls I'm cold calling because I need you to give me an opportunity you know let me service your thousand employees let, let me get you some a crazy because I can do anything from hibachi amen to soul food whatever whatever you want I can make it and if I don't know how I know how to study to show myself <laughs> approved and practice because practice you may not get perfect but practice will get you into a place of perfection where you can walk at another level walking at another level that's what it's all about so an understanding the sacrifice and understanding that you have to put the work in to get the results that you want and understanding that as an entrepreneur you can't just say what you want you have to inspect what you expect and in inspecting what you expecting if it's not producing the way that you wanted to, to it to produce then there comes the correction and the direction so in knowing that let's talk about building your team and working off the gifts of your team well, you know, uh, this is what 
I've learned in pastoring is that there are many gifted people in the house that have to be developed. And so you give them opportunity uh, first in, in, in their, their service, how they, how they serve. You know, are they, are they faithful in the little things? Because you become faithful over a little, God can make you ruler over much. Yes. And so you find, you find people that, that they go the extra mile. You know, when, uh, he, when the Ray Kroc and uh, they instituted the saying, if you can lean, you can clean. You know, you, you find the people that you can work with, uh, that they, take, they have the initiative when they see stuff on the ground. Like if, like if you can be uh, inside of your church and you can see an area that you know that you can fix and don't fix it, that's a problem. Yeah. You can walk past yeah. trash. You can see that the toilets are nasty and you don't take five minutes out of your life to, to wipe it down and, and you sitting there complaining. No, no, no. You want to hire people and connect with people that have initiative. When they see yes. stuff that's out of place, they go the extra mile. They, they don't just sit there and play and gossip. And I don't want to I don't want to be friends. That's what I've learned. I don't want to be your friend. I want to be friendly. And don't, don't take me wrong. You know, I, I'm a very giving and loving person, but I didn't come to be your friend. I came to win. When this, this shift is over, we can go and kick it. But I really don't hang out with people that I work with because you don't need to see me, you know, how I eat. I might eat my french fries and you judge me, you know, he eating too fast. You know, whatever. but at the end of the day, we came to work. We came to, you know, to become great. You know, and, and if you're going you to become great, you have to find people that want to want to be great. They may not know that they're great yet, but yes. you can identify. You have a gift, you know, and I want to help to develop that gift. I, I see you in your own franchise. I see you as my next general manager. I see you, you know, in an eighty thousand dollar year, you know, position. But 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 I see it in you because you take on the little things. You man, you have don't nobody have to tell you to do it. You see it and you put it in place. You wash dishes when nobody asks. You wipe down counters when nobody asks. You you take the initiative in order to improve where you're working at because you realize if if I become great, you become great because my whole thing is I believe in reciprocity. I believe in paying it yeah. forward. I want to see people win. I put many people in business. You know, I'm talking about I I, I didn't spend little money. I spent more on their businesses than some of, the, some of my own in the beginning. Yes. You know, because I saw people that I wanted to invest in, you know, and make a deposit in. You know, and, and, and that's how you should identify the people that you're around. Man, these people, they have excellent work ethics. Yes. They, they, they're people, man, they're, they're high character, high integrity people, and they can go to the next level. They just don't know that. And many yeah, people we are around, God has given them gifts. Ooh. They just don't know how to multiply, maximize, or, or, or continue to replenish, you know, their own life. But, but when they get that push and somebody's speaking to them and give them the keys to the building, give them the keys to the operation and say, I, I believe in you, I trust you, I'm going to make you a shift leader, now I'm going to make you an assistant manager, I'm going to make you a manager. They went through processes and levels, but they've proven themselves at every level. That's how you build your team. Find people that you can recognize, man, they want to do something. And they don't just do it when you're looking. They're great yes. when, when you're not around. Yes. Now, those kind of people, that I, they're great when ain't nobody looking. You just walk up in there, they know you was coming, and you see them on their grind, making it happen. Those are the kind of people that you want to connect with. And, and what we have right now in this society is uh, people are, 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 everybody wants something given to them. We, we have a generation Ooh, where everybody think that because you cute and you weaved up and you got on all this makeup catfishing folk and all of that stuff and you bought you, you know, some uh, this and you bought you that and you fixed this up that, no. And they sitting there, I'm seeing people on, on Facebook and I'm so disappointed because they be just looking into the camera for 78, 90 minutes shaking their head and just <laughs> licking their lips and, 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 and throwing back. They ain't saying nothing. I'm sitting nothing. up there saying, and you caught, you caught 78 minutes of my life. I'm mesmerized by this insanity because it didn't build me. It, did, it, did, it didn't improve me. It didn't take me to another level. I'm telling you, you know, and we, in order for us to be great, you know, we have to find people that, that already have it on, on the inside and we just identify yeah. gifts and callings and, and, and we help to, to promote and to, to build them. Yes, that's all about cultivating the gifts inside of others and that's amazing and as an entrepreneur, that's what you want to do because people have to understand everybody don't come with a total package. No, not Most people don't, right? So then you have to find somebody that is strong in the areas that you're weak because we all have weaknesses so we all can't do everything I can't do the numbers and do the books and go out and market and run the business and you know what I'm saying do everything and train the staff all the things that it entails in being an entrepreneur so in knowing that your team has gifts and talents inside of them and it's up to you to help to cultivate those gifts and talents that are inside of your team one of the things that I wanted to talk about when you're looking at your team and the gifts and talents that they may have some people's are leaders and some people are managers and some people are taskers. So let's talk about the difference between a leader, 
a manager and a tasker so you can be able to identify where you should place those people when they come into your life because a leader is not always going to be a good tasker and a manager just because you can manage it doesn't mean that you can lead the people so let's talk about the difference between those three as it relates to an entrepreneur there's a leader a manager and a tasker well everybody wants to be uh, uh, the chief you know, and you don't have many folks that just want you know want to follow, but they don't have the uh, the skill set right then. Doesn't mean that they won't uh, develop it. They recognize innately that there's something great about them, and I agree with that. Uh, but when you're when you're in leadership, number one is that leadership doesn't mean that I, I don't serve and I and, and and things are beneath me or these things are menial. When I'm in leadership, I'm willing to go the extra do mile. I, I lead by example. I'm, I'm willing to you know to wash toilets. I'm I'm willing to do whatever Sweep it's going to take. You know, yes. I mean Hold you know right. Now I'm, I'm wiping toilets. I'm sweeping. I'm yes. mopping, and I got I got one leg, and my leg is it is a way too big for my body. I'm literally, you know, I've fallen uh, several times over the last uh, month because my leg is too big. <laughs> I seen a Facebook live that yeah. you did about you falling, and you said you just looked up and you got a revelation from God, like I'm down here, but if I can look up, I can get a go ahead. <laughs> you know, I, I, listen, I, I and I had to pull myself up. There was yes. nobody else in the room, yes. you know, that was going to do the pulling. But at the end of the day, you know, great leaders yes. they lead back example mm -hmm. you know they and and they and when when they lead they they know how to get the best out of their their managers they they teach them like you know the way that you corrected that situation it wasn't healthy it wasn't good uh, and, and let, let me show you the correct way because a lot of times we can point out but we don't know how to bring clarity on how it's supposed to be mm -hmm. so when you do it when you when you are in a correction mode this is how you do it you know where you can take the person off the offensive where you know they're going to be offended when you come in with this much aggression you know right. and, and I'm telling you I, I've been guilty let me say this because I don't want to be hypocritical is that when you under under pressure and sometimes you know my kids they'd be like dude you are the incredible hawk you know because I'm very I'm very strong willed I'm very I'm very aggressive I'm very assertive I don't, and I don't play a lot of games you know it's because I've lost too much in my yes. life to, to recognize as you know you have to be serious but what I'm learning is this like my, my 16 year old she she's able to diffuse me and to get me to think outside of the box and, and the, to bring some clarity and so she'd be like well dad you know handle it like this because because you've been doing really good. So I found her to be a great leader because she'd be coaxing my little okay. feelings like, you know, you've been doing great, you know, and I'm sitting up to see like, because that other way it doesn't work, you know, work with your kids well, you know, because they'd be crying and they feeling, and I'm sitting up there saying, okay, you know, I have to learn how to deal with situation. I have to be open for correction myself because I'm at the top. That don't mean that I don't that's get instruction. Right. That right. don't mean I don't, I don't, I, I don't listen to those that's, that's with me because they're not beneath me. They're, they're with me. We're growing together, you know, and so I, as the leader I have to be able to get instruction so I can give to the manager the manager can give back to me we work in, in a reciprocal relationship you know and, and at the end of the day the buck stops with me but I hope that I've, I've impressed upon your heart that you know you know that when I tell you something it's, it's out of wisdom or it's out of love it's not to hurt you it's to make you better so we can become better and then it's those those tasks that we both have to download into yeah. you know because they're, they're, their futures on the line mm -hmm. there have been a lot of people you know that I have just wanted to just 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 fire them immediately and I've given them chance after chance because I recognize is that you know what their their future is right now in, in 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 this work environment you know and if I kill them if I kill their their drive and their motivation you know that it, it might affect them uh, when they go out there and and just become you know ultimately lazy forever and so I try and and and, and teach those that are uh, that are in management is you know what you got to encourage them that they can do this then show them how to do it show them how to die show show them how to talk you know and a lot of times I I, I was with a guy. And he was just hanging. He was a tasker. And uh, he would listen to me, how I dealt with the customer. And I looked up one day. He sounded just like me. You <laughs> and know? that's what you want. And I was out there passing the out goofy. flyers. I showed him how I did. Next thing I know, boy, he was out there passing out flyers, you know, and, and, and talking to people. And they was coming in, right? You know, and so that tasker, you know, I saw him as being a future leader. Yeah. You know, and so so that's the thing is we have to continue to recognize uh, where people are at and sow into them, pour into them, and, and help them so that they can rise to the levels that they were created because every one of us were, cr were created by God to be managed. When you look yes. back at Genesis, you know, he, when he said, let us make man after our image, you know, and let them have dominion, dominion. he wanted all of us to dominate. He really didn't want none of yes. us to have a boss if yes. I was to be honest. Yes. You know, the, the boss is, is a result of the curse, you know, that was released in the earth, but since it's here and we have to operate in it, we ought to have some integrity, we ought to have some character, we ought to have some vision, and we ought to be consistent and diligent in whatever we do, and we ought to decide to be great so that we can win at the highest levels in our life and help others 
you know, reach, reach greatness for their lives. Amen. I love it. I love it. I love it. So for me, a, a leader is a visionary. So the leader is somebody who has the visionary. I can see where it is that I want us to go. It doesn't necessarily mean I know how to get us there, right? And then the manager is the person who's going to see to the day-to-day -day mundane things of how we're going to get there. And the tasker is actually going to do those tasks to get there. But yes, like you said, a tasker can move up and become a manager and then ultimately become a leader. And one thing that you said is next on my list of things to talk about is listening to many advisors. I love the fact that your baby girl, 16 years old, was able to get you together, get you all the way together. Now, one of the things that I learned, <laughs> I used to be, to a, uh -huh, you got your daddy all the way together and he said it on Facebook Live. All right. So one of the things that I want to talk about, I remember back in the day, I was taking up a Toastmasters class. And in the Toastmasters class, they told us that when you correct people, you want to do the sandwich effect. And what the sandwich effect is, I want to give you a compliment first, and then I want to give you the what uh, I'm disappointed in or the area of correction, and then I want to come back with a compliment. They said it's easier to people to eat that sandwich than it is to just eat the meat by itself. My God. So I love that, you know, baby girl said, Daddy, you've been doing good in this area. So she gave you the bun. Then she gave you the meat. But, you know, when you're talking to certain people, you got to do it like that. And then she came back. So she gave you the sandwich effect without even knowing what the sandwich effect was. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. So now we want to talk about listening to advisors. The Bible says in Proverbs, there's, um, counts, um, I'm forgetting the scripture, there's something, safety. There's safety in and the multitude, multitude of counselors. counselors. Mm -hmm. So baby girl was a counselor for you at that moment. So let's talk about as an entrepreneur, how much safety is it in listening to a multitude of counselors? And then when do we know this is me? I'm going to eat the meat. This is bones. I'm going to spit out these bones. Well, you know, there is great uh, wisdom in listening to people who, who has a proven track record. And, and even those who have uh, tried, you know, and failed. And failed, yeah. You know, like, um, you know, I listen to uh, a, a few people that, you know, that's willing to speak into my life. Uh, there's a, a, a legend in our city. He comes up to talk to me. Uh, he, he started uh, some of the first McDonald's as an African-American in Ohio. And uh, he comes by, you know, all the time, you know, uh, just to talk with me. And he critiques and, and tells him what we can do better. And I don't take uh, him as being an old dinosaur or outdated. No, I, I sit here and give him the greatest reverence and honor, you know, because he is he is trailblazed. You know, yes. he's gone before. He opened up, you know, five, ten McDonald's, you know. I mean, I've never done that, reached those heights. But, you know, when you got that kind of person speaking into your life, you ought to take heed on, to what they're saying. It doesn't matter, you know, if they're retired now or whatever, you know, because there is great wisdom in the most of counsel so I'm, I'm always able you know to listen and then I'm the kind of person that I will seek out you know advice it's just a lot of people uh, when they have something good they, a lot of times they don't want to share it mm. you know whether it's a system whether it's an opportunity mm. whether it's a bank whether it's a, 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 a divine connection whatever it is people you know some people are just uh, selfish my whole thing is I believe in hitting the share button you know I believe in asking questions I believe in promoting other people because I understand biblical principles whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap I can never lose you know when I'm making an investment or sowing to other people right. and so when I'm asking for, for wisdom I'm asking somebody you know to plant a seed in my mind give, give me some how, how do I do this better because what I've learned about myself is is I am a great creator but I might not be the best manager yeah. you know like I'm a yeah. great visionary I can take stuff from conception and bring it to the full manifestation but but I need to be there to help oversee but I might not be the hands on day to day person that's going to do uh, every part of the books that's going to do this you know but I understand it so I try and find people you know that that we can work together and, yeah. and, and, and do these things so so we can so we can win amen so listening to many advisors that's a good thing you know because when people come everybody has something that they can you can glean from right. like I I've been in the beauty industry for over 30 years now you don't and look even 30 I like thank you so much so um it's the glory of God Hallelujah. but uh, <laughs> you know what and um this one lady asked me the other day she said I was going to a class and she said you still take classes you still go to workshops and seminars as it relates to the beauty industry I said yeah because when Whenever I go to class, I can always learn something. I said, let me tell you what I learned one time at this haircutting class that I went to. I didn't learn anything about the skill of haircutting. I learned that you can put a garbage can right next to you, and when you cut the hair, you can throw it right in the garbage can. Wow. So it's like, what are you looking for? So when I'm looking to um, get the advice of many counselors, you can always get something if you're looking to get something. Yes. 
I'm always looking to get something. I'm always looking to get better. And uh, I've come to find out that, you know, you can get that uh, through people that you, you honor. What you, what, you re what you repel or what you reject, uh, you repel in your life. You know, like you, you, I can sit there and listen to your husband talk to me about uh, leadership and, and pastoring or uh, a season that I'm in, and uh, I can listen to his wisdom and I can I, I can be encouraged and become better. Or I can sit there and say he don't know nothing, and I reject that anointing and that wisdom, and I repel that blessing that's on his life to come into my life. So it's always good to have an open mind, you know, and and to realize no matter how gifted you are, you you don't know everything. You don't know everything. You know, I, I, I see I see you sometimes. Jake's uh, T.D. Jake's he'll have his uh, spiritual father on, on the platforms uh, with these pink and uh, suits on and stuff and they I'll be sitting there looking like man he looks like a nice country preacher and uh, you know and Jake's is very sophisticated and refined now you know but he still talks about you know he's honoring his father yes. you know he had an outgrown you know yes. where, where he's come from you know he's, he's gaining wisdom on mm -hmm, how to you know mm -hmm, do ministry mm -hmm. but he also has a great uh, multitude of, of the top pastors around the world that he speaks into and they speak back into his yes. life you know and so it's, it's just good to be able to, uh, to receive uh, when we're in leadership at any level and, and not to be a know-it-all wow. you know, and I'm always open I'm 47 and I'm still open to advice I'm open to ideals like literally uh, my 14 year old I sent her uh, the new menu all of them I sent all of them the menu to look at and my 14 year old she said you need to remove all of these super chef uh, 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 favorites she was like we not ready for that right mm. you know and these was uh, like five dishes that I wanted to present that I just know people would love and she said no we're not staffed correctly for that right okay. now and we don't we don't have the equipment to be able to get it out as quick as we like and you know what I did I, I took everything off she told me to take off and I started looking at other stuff that I could take off that was going to take up too much time right now we're in the, while we're in the process of, of getting our brand and our name no no we need to be operating on efficiency but I learned from a 14 year old that we're not ready for that amen I love it operating of efficiency so operating in efficiency and effectiveness so our, our show is an hour and we down to the last eight minutes <laughs> and this has been good so now is the time for the call to action so when the call to action I want you to tell us all about your business invite us to come and then we want to invite you all to come to the Christian networking entrepreneurs because if you like what Pastor Ken shared today on the 26th he's going to be talking about the importance or the benefits of collaboration Christian Networking Entrepreneurs, what we are, we are this show. We do this show monthly every third Thursday at 10 o'clock. Every third Thursday, you can tune in to KAZ and watch Christian Networking Entrepreneurs. But then every quarter, we go and showcase a Christian business, and we invite you out for training and networking. So mark your calendars. So let's do our call for action now. First, we're going to do a call for action for the restaurant, and then we're going to talk about the Christian Networking Entrepreneurs. Well, you know, the, uh, the call for action for the restaurant, you know, we are Chippers Seafood Steaks and Melts at uh, 1245 Psalm Center, and uh, we are serving incredible food, and we are efficient. We getting uh, the food out. One thing that I, uh, I've concentrated on is getting that food out quickly and amazing, you know, because I've been to many of our restaurants. When I say our, you know who our is, you know, is that, you know, you be in that boy 30, 40, 50 minutes waiting on, you know, a piece of fish or whatever, you know, you'd be sitting up and saying it don't take that long, and so my whole thing is you know we we're presenting uh, an excellent uh, presentation the food is amazing we're going the extra mile uh, like with our fish you know dinners or our seafood dinners you know not only do you get two sides but you also get coleslaw and honey pups which is our our world famous hush puppies that we baptize in that sweet jesus glaze you know so it's a call that you you have to get there come try us out and and we make it as we'll be talking about today through collaboration yeah. you know we talking about how we support one another how we build one another how we promote one another you cannot be offended when you see somebody doing something that you want to do. No, share their, share that opportunity. Tell them, go out and support. You come out and try. You come and glean. You come and ask questions, you know, because you might want to do the same thing. And I'm actually one of the people in the world that you can sit down and talk. I'm never too busy, amen, to help people. If I'm too busy, I'll make an opportunity or a space to give you, you know, some of my time, you know, but you got to come out and be a part of when we collaborate, you know, we build each other, we grow together, you know, when, and I'm going to talk about this on the 20th 
26, you know, it's from, it comes from the statement, collaboration comes from God. Let us make man. He said, let us. H Holy Spirit, the Father, you know, and, and, and the Spirit of God, Jesus, you know, they came together. You know, they collaborated in, in order, you know, to produce a perfect man. You know, let us make man after our image. We have to collaborate. Let us build one another. You know, let us create millionaires. Let us uh, uh, pass on the opportunity. Let us help others franchise. Let us pass on wisdom. But we have to work together. And we have to do it now. Listen, the world is it, it is on fire all around us. There's destructive destruction taking place. But we have to take this now moment and begin to accelerate. Well, listen, let Jesus in the boat. And what, what we've been toiling at all these years, man, he can get us there over, over in a matter of seconds. But we have to let him in. We have to work together. I'm saying let, let, let's stop acting like we each other's competition. No, yes. man, we are our brother's yes. keeper. Man, let's work together as the body of Christ. Let's work together as a family. And I'm not talking about other com communities. I'm talking about the faith community. Man, learn how to support one another. You know, stop riding past people that you know that that's my brother, that's my sister. No, learn how to support them. Say, no, I'm going to run in there, you know, and let them do my hair. I'm going to run in there and, you know, and buy a meal. It may be a dollar more than the Arabs, you know, but at the end of the day, learn how to support one another. And I'm not against any group of people, but I am for the kingdom of God. I am for believers, and I want each one of us to win at a high level, and our time to win is, is now. now. Now, now faith is can you zoom in on this real quick so this is the flyer for Christian networking entrepreneurs we want you to come out and have a wonderful evening and listen to Pastor Ken do a talk about the benefits of collaboration it is next Thursday September the 26th at 7 p.m. to 8 30 it's only an hour and a half so what you can expect you can expect to come with your business cards you can network with other Christian um, based entrepreneurs and believers community leaders and then we're we're going to have a talk from Pastor Ken. He's going to talk about collaboration. After that, we're going to um, have a meal. We're going to sample some of his food. That's going to be amazing. And then we're going to go home. It's only an hour and a half. So how you register, please register on Eventbrite. Go to Eventbrite, look up CNE, and register. Why do we need you to register? So we can have enough food. I know a lot of times you just want to stop in. I'm available today. But if you can register in advance, we would greatly appreciate that. It's Thursday. Registration stops on Tuesday night so we can get a good head count of who all is coming. So thank you so much, Pastor Ken. We appreciate you. No, I appreciate you know, being have, here. Yes, it's amazing. Any closing remarks before I do well, my you know, final close? Yeah, you know, just a couple things. Uh, first, I want to thank you and, and your husband and the organization, you know, for uh, bringing me out. Uh, she has been beyond generous. Uh, she has been a blessing. Uh, her husband has been a, a shining star. You know, he came in uh, a few weeks ago, uh, he spoke into my life at a very critical, pivotal point uh, and encouraged me. And then, then on top of that, he sowed a seed into my life. Didn't have to. And uh, just want to say I, how much I appreciate you and New Beginnings uh, Ministry and uh, this Christian entrepreneur, you know, the network. And uh, we ought to get behind uh, them and support them and uh, sow into them. Not only, you know, come out and be a part of the fellowship uh, on that day, uh, come out, you know, and, and see exactly how excellence and operation what it looks like you know because when you look at the McCurries and how they operate they are doing an incredible uh, service in the body of Christ trying to bring all of us dreamers all of us uh, leaders all of us visionaries together no big attitudes uh, no big titles but but want each one of us to win and to be maximized in our life and our finance and our relationships and man we ought to get behind them so come on out and be a part of it and I'm excited because I have a word that's going to stir you up and we're going to show you how to go from point A to point B and how to take little and turn it into much and using the power of collaboration the power of let us make man uh, that that simple statement let us that us factor the us factor can change your life amen amen so i'm super excited about the 26th so again we're christian networking entrepreneurs i'm your host pastor t and christian networking entrepreneurs are for emerging entrepreneurs that means somebody just starting out for small businesses and for community leaders we're also looking for people to join our advisory board 
So being a part of the Christian Networking Entrepreneurs Advisory Board, we just come together with great ideas and try to help promote, uplift, and inspire the Christian business community to do everything in excellence and to glorify God in everything that we do. So if you're interested in being a part of that, you can shoot us an email at info at mynewbeginning.org. That's info at mynewbeginning.org. Or you can give me a call, 216-466-3801. Our time is up, and I want to thank you for yours. Look forward to seeing you on the 26th at 7 o'clock at Chipper's Seafood. The address is 1245 Psalm Center Road in Mayfield Heights, Ohio. Be blessed, but most of all, be inspired. And remember, if you don't network, you don't work.